chapter 30, Wakey Wakey Whippington. Lucy sat upright. Her mind was racing, her heart pounding. Somehow, while staring at the shadowy nothing, she drifted off to sleep. It was still dark. Stars twinkled overhead as she looked around Camp Whiffington and saw that everyone had done the same. Everyone was peacefully snoozing away. Old Man Carvey was wrapped up in his fluffy dressing gown. Paige Turner had fallen asleep with a nose in a book. Mayor Noying was snoring into his megaphone. All was peaceful. Lucy sighed as she glanced down at her sleeping parents. Although her plan hadn't worked, she had succeeded in one thing, bringing her parents back. She had succeeded, not just back from the wallop, but back together. She looked at their happy sleeping faces. And even though their eyes were tightly shut, she knew there was love in them. But that wasn't all Lucy saw. She leant in close for a better look at her mum and dad's eyes. Her heart leapt. In the corners were the unmistakable little crumbling drops of dozy dust. She quickly glanced around at everyone else. They all had dozy dust too. Slowly, she raised her hand up to her own face and wiped the corners of her eyes. As she lowered it, her heart began beating so hard that she was sure she would wake everyone up. There, on the tips of her fingers, were the little nuggets of golden dozy dust. She looked towards the whopping great bed and a huge face crept her huge smile crept across her face and this is what she saw. While they were all asleep, the enormous pile of Whiffington rubbish had mysteriously disappeared in the night, just like magic, just as Lucy had planned. It worked, Lucy whispered to herself, grinning from ear to ear. Her smile was suddenly greeted by the warmth of the rising sun. It peeked over the tops of the four trees, acting as giant bedposts, and began chasing away the shadows. Lucy glanced around at her town as they lay snoozing blissfully unaware that her plan had worked, that Lucy the kid had found a way for them all to live happily together in harmony. That despite their differences, it was possible for human and creaker to coexist. As the sunlit melted the night, replacing shadows with a warm orange glow of morning, Lucy looked at the last remaining spot of darkness between the giant bed, where four pairs of twinkling black eyes quickly disappeared in the world below. The end. Okay. So that's it. Story over. I hope you enjoyed it. What do you mean? What happened next? I've already written the end. I didn't think I'd allowed to write anything else after that. It's the rule. All right then. Maybe just a little bit. Epilogue. Tomorrow. Grunt, guff, scratch and sniff creep back into the wallet dragging with them bags and bags of glorious Whiffington rubbish. Looks at all this mucky mess we've got, cheered Guff. More than we ever snatched before, yelled Scratch. And we didn't have to do hardly any creaking, added Grunt, sounding quite amazed. All this disgusting garbage just sitting there for us to snatch, just like that broke Guff with rotten delight. All thanks to the kiddling, said Sniff happily. Grunt stopped suddenly, causing the other creakers to bump into him. He turned and stared at Sniff, looking deep into his round black eyes. No creaker had ever said a nice word about a pigling before. They were so used to hiding from kiddlings in the shadows beneath their beds, 
sneaking into their rooms and creaking around their houses. Being nice about a kidney was something new, something strange. His brain must be rotted, laughed Scratch nervously, worried that Grunt was angry at Sniff. He just needs a good slop at the tavern. No, Grunt whispered. Sniff be right. If he weren't for the kidlings, this place would be all sunburnt and all be dusted. She saved us. He gazed with astonishment at Sniff and Sniff said, and Sniff saved the girl. That means Sniff saved us. Sniff kicked the ground with embarrassment, not knowing where to look. Guff and Scratch were stumped. Things were changing in the wallow, changing for the better. And looks, went on Grunt. We've got enough rotten mess in one night to last us a whole week. He pointed at the huge pile of smiley prizes they were hauling between them. We need not be creaking up there every night like we used to, agreed Sniff. We'd be able to spend more time with our creakings, Grunt interrupted Sniff, which took Sniff by surprise as it was usually him that did all the butting in. Perhaps kiddlings be not so bad after all. Sniff suggested. They dragged the heavy load of Whiffington rubbish deep down into the depths of the wallop, clawing out rotten gift to creak as they passed on the way. They gave Mrs Blister boxes and boxes of broken eggshells to rebuild the creaker school that had crumbled to pieces in the wallop quake. No, thank you, she cried as she accepted them excitedly. Sergeant Gurgle and Major Curd, two Waller police officers, siphoned all the curdled off milk to use as fuel for the Waller police cars. Claggy Maggot and Maggie Clog, owners of the Maggot and Clog grocery, grocery store, collected all the banana peels, moulded vegetables and fish bones to sell in a week or so once they matured a bit. Eventually, Grunt, Guff, Scratch and Sniff had delivered all the rotten delights to the hard-working creepers of the Wallop below Whiffington as they re rebuilt their weird homes. There were boos and hisses as the four creepers passed through. It was a real hero's welcome. Grunt had been deep in force, his mind turning suddenly over as they creeped through the town. Suddenly, he leapt up to the top of the heap of rot and motioned for the crowds that had gathered to quiet them down. Fellow creepers, he bellowed, and the hundreds of slimy black creatures hushed and listened. We'd be starting a new time. We'd be rebuilding ourselves a new wallop. The crowd booed in agreement. Grunt continued. And this new wallop means a new king. Silence fell. Grunt stood atop the pile, looking as powerful as a creaker could look. Grunt for king! Grunt for king! The crowd began chanting. Grunt held up his hand and silence fell again like magic. I would be honoured to be your king, he croaked, and the crowd booed in celebration. Added Grunt. The booing was instantly replaced by confused whispers. And there's Grunt. But I think this wallop needs a king with the with new ideas, a king with a new way of thinking. Grunt boomed, staring into the eyes of his fellow creakers. Someone who's not afraid to be different. She stands up for what he believes to be right. He turned and suddenly pointed his claw at the creaker behind him. Someone like Sniff! Gasps erupted from the crowds as all eyes turned to the small, boiled, covered creaker standing in Grunt's shadow. Sniff dared to trust the kiddling when no one else 
did. He dared to be different. It was Sniff that saved you. Grunts, cried Grunt as he dropped to his knee and bowed his bald head to Sniff. There was a pause as hundreds of creakers stared at the tinsy creaker. Then one by one, they dropped to their knees and bowed in respect to their new leader. He was the one who helped to save the Waleb. Sniff stared at his disgusting kingdom and let out a little excited squeal. Grunt announced, All hell is rotten us, King! Sniff! Sniff blurted out, interrupting Grunt in utter disbelief. The Creakers had a new king. Well, that be it, said Grunt, handing out the final scraps of the bottom of the last rubbish bag to Guff, Scratch and King Sniff. Takes whatever's left home for your families. See you tomorrow, Guff said, his bottom releasing a little barb. No, not tomorrow. I think we'll all be getting... I think we'll all right taking a little time off from creaking, Grunt smiled. That's if the king approves. Oh, er, uh, yeah, Sniff stuttered, trying to get used to the whole idea of being king of the creakers. With that, Grunt gave the three of them a little salute and left them standing in the twisted wallop tunnel. He creaked all the way along the winding spider leg and didn't stop until he was standing outside a dark crack in the wall of the Waleb, the entrance to his home. The foul stench of stewing sprouts filled the air, and he took a deep sniff of his wife's awful cooking. Home, sour home, he sighed, as he stepped inside and was greeted by the most wondrous sound in all of the Waleb. the end again. Have a wonderful holiday you two and we'll see you next year.